Hey, hey, what is happening? It's Kev, the YouTube audio guy. The YouTube channel for short, informative videos in plain English on how to create clean, creative audio. Okay, today we salute the bass guitar lines of rock. I'm talking about those gritty, edgy bass lines you've heard in music ranging from classic rock to metal. And to achieve those bass lines, our weapon of choice for today is Native Instruments Scarby Rickenbacker Bass. Now, Scarby Rick Bass sounds fantastic, and it's really easy to use. So, let's get right to that demo track. Everything you hear in this bass line is coming from Scarby Rickenbacker Bass. Let's do it! Nice. Let's break down how I did this. Okay, we're in contact, so let's go to Scarby Rickenbacker Bass, single click on Instruments, double click on Scarby Rickenbacker Bass, palm muted, and the instrument loads into contact. Let's verify that we're on MIDI channel 1, so there's MIDI channel 1 right there, and let's set the volume control to minus 60 dB. So shift and we'll drag, that way it kind of gives us fine control, and we go to minus six dB. Okay, to really understand this instrument, let's take this in three steps. Virtual room, building a sound, and then performance tools. First, we are looking at a virtual room. Within this room, we have a Rickenbacker bass, an amp head with a speaker cabinet, an open reel tape machine, a compressor, and an equalizer. As I move my mouse over each of these objects, you see brackets appear. If I click on an object, I get a detailed view of all its controls. All controls can be modified and the entire room full of settings can then be named and saved as a preset right up here. Okay, so let's click this X right here to close this and let's build a sound. In a real world situation, I would plug this bass into a direct box Plus I would mic the amp and then mix those two sounds together. The direct channel would be the meat of the sound and the mic channel would be for distortion. For the direct sound, let's go to our preset menu and select Primal Privacy. And let's modify it a bit to bring out the weight of the pick against the strings. Single click on the amp head and let's bring up the preamp one notch and the bass two notches. Let's also click on the bass cabinet and select the 4x10 cabinet with aluminum cones to thicken the mids. Let's save that as a preset. Click on the text and change the name to Heavy Pick DI. And then click on the disc icon. So now if we click on the arrow here, we see that we have now added our new preset, Heavy Pick DI, to the bottom of the preset menu. For the distortion sound, let's add another instance of Scarby Rickenbacker bass to our contact window. Click on the minus button to the upper right of the screen, and we shrink the screen. Now for our mic'd amp sound. Double click on Scarby Rickenbacker bass, and another instance loads. Let's click on the plus sign to expand it so we can get a look at it. And we want these two instances to play layered together, so let's set this to MIDI channel 1 and set this instance 9 dB lower in volume. So let's move our volume slider down to minus 15. For our mic damp sound, it's simple. Simply click here and let's select preset double trouble. Now that we built the sound, let's play some notes and listen to our layers. Let's listen to our direct layer first by muting our distortion layer. And now let's hear our distortion sound. Mute the direct and... Cool. Now let's go to our tracks window and record some notes. Okay, in our tracks window, we have four tracks right here. Notes, hand position, mutes, and slides. Note that all our tracks are signed to MIDI channel one. 
Let's start by recording some notes into our notes track. And to save time, I'll drop in some notes that I previously recorded. And I've colored those notes in blue to match the blue keys on the contact keyboard. Okay, let's play this bass line. Okay, we have a bass line, but we need to make it sound more natural. Let's work on giving it some realism. Let's move on to performance tools. Okay, on our contact keyboard below, you see that the higher and the lower keys are red in color. The higher keys to the right are control keys. Control keys don't make a sound, but they alter the sound when they're played along with the blue keys or played along with notes. Red keys on the right control hand position. Hand position? What's that mean? I will show you exactly what that means. On bass guitar, you can play the same bass line in a number of different places on the neck, but it sounds different depending on where you're playing. The white line right here above the fretboard represents a virtual left hand. You notice that it covers the distance of one, two, three, four frets at the top of the fretboard. Okay, so I'm gonna play some of the hand position control keys right here. So as I play the hand position control keys, we hear the sliding sound of our hand against the strings and we see the white line move. I'll now play notes while shifting hand positions. So you hear a difference in the sound. Let's return to our track window and add some hand position information. To save time, I've already recorded some hand position information, so let's drop that in. And let's play this without the hand position information and then with. So here's without. And here's with. Okay, so you can hear there's a subtle difference, but it adds to the realism. Let's go back to our contact window. I want to add some muted notes and some slides to this performance. If you notice, we have a question mark right here. So we'll click on it. And a window opens displaying the notes that correspond to the red control keys on the left side of the screen. For this demo, we are interested in two keys. First, the A sharp minus one key, which is a control key for mutes. So I'll now play some notes while holding down the A sharp minus one mute key. And without. And last, we have our A sharp zero key, which isn't a control key, but is instead the sound of a string clap against the pickup. Let's play it. Cool. Let's return to our track window and record some muted notes and string claps. Okay, to save time, I'll drop in some muted notes that I've already recorded. And of course, those notes will be on the mutes track. Let's now turn off our notes and our hand position track, and let's just listen to the mutes. Okay, now let's add the notes and the hand position tracks back in and listen again. Now we're starting to get some more realism happening. Let's finish this off with some slides. Slides are easy. You simply hold down the sustain pedal of your keyboard while alternating between playing two notes an octave or less apart. If you play softly, the slides will be slow. If you play hard, the slides will be fast. Let's return to our track window and record some slides. I'll record slides right here on my slides track. I've already recorded a one bar slide, so let's drop it in. And we see the slide right here. So let's mute our notes, our hand position, and our mutes track, and let's listen to just the slide. Cool. I'll add my other tracks back in, and I'll copy the slide to measure 10 as a fill. Let's now listen to all our tracks.
That's the groove. To download a free session file of today's video, go to www.youtubeaudioguy.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.